listening to Theo Trade, this is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for May the 7th, 2019, and it's a drop day. The Dow Jones is down roughly 550 points at the moment, with about 10 minutes to go in the close for the session. S&P is off 55 points, NASDAQ is about 175, and the Russell 35, which makes all indices down about 2% today. We did achieve a downside target on the daily chart of the S&P 500. That is the 2860 level, which is the 50 day exponential, but it also goes back to a price pivot from earlier in March and later in 2018. I keep comparing the market to where we were at the latter part of 2018 with these similar divergences in volume. And we can see the volume declining and price stair-stepping its way impossibly higher day after day after day. We think the market can't go any higher but eventually, of course, it does. In Thursday night's Theo Night video, I discussed the sell in May, go away Wall Street wisdom, found out that that doesn't really work as a standalone strategy. But in 2019, that may be the case, as we are seeing additional selling take us away from the 2950 level down toward our initial support target. And that's about the 2860. What happens next? That's what we're talking about in tonight's video. Where do we go from here? If history is a prologue, this could be a precursor for additional selling. Take a look at where we were in the later part of 2018 with the similar divergences, similar pickup or burst up or stair step up in bear or red sell volume. And of course the decline or divergences in green bull volume. That also happened to be about the 2950 S&P futures level. That set up a move away from the 20 exponential down toward the 50 day exponential. That's roughly at that point, 2880. Right now it was about 2860. And then we thought that this little selling pressure was a lot. That took us two trend days in a row on surging volume. The precursor to that was this roughly 2 million contracts traded on each of these two days, almost there, before the market sold off. And that again was into the 2900 level, into the 50 day exponential. Beneath those support targets were the rising 200 day simple moving average and gravity at roughly 2733. What is the picture now? It looks very similar with divergences in bull or buy volume, pickups or increases in bear or distributive, bear sell volume, and the market falling away from 2950 to about 2880. It may go without saying that the similarities are uncanny. So what's the play now? Will the future play out like it did earlier in 2018? If so, the market has a big drop zone, sell short zone, trend day zone, or reap profits on your purchased put positions or long volatility positions. If the market does stumble and trade beneath 2860, 2855, and 2850. That opens up a drop zone. It may look like we're headed that direction, but as always, take every day, every trade, every opportunity within the bigger picture and with caution and risk control. That's the S&P. So if we do not get a bounce or at least a support pivot off of this target, that is of course, again, the prior high and the 50 day moving average. If there isn't a further bounce than we're seeing right now into the close, the market does have a drop zone towards about 2775, 2800, 2811, just lower support pivots on the S&P futures. In the Dow, we didn't even get to new all-time highs. The market fell just shy of 27,000 and we're seeing a push down away from these levels. Also seeing the similar pickup, we can see it here maybe clearer, in bear or distribution volume. That's when the red volume candles or the red volume bars are higher, persistently higher, than those green ones. And this is a divergence when price goes up, but the volume goes down. And this is, of course, indicative of distribution and should raise our spidey senses to make us much more cautious if we weren't already. Remember, the time to get those hedges on is when the market's going up, not necessarily when it's coming crashing down. There wasn't a lot of time to put those hedges on after the market started the tumble, and that tumble was about uh, a couple of weeks. And that was for that point in time, that was all she wrote. Will this be similar? That's the big question of tonight's video 
and the rest of this week. In the NASDAQ, we did see some instability, and that just means price swings rapidly in both directions. And this instability leads to bigger trends or bigger intraday movement, and of course, higher volatility. On the NASDAQ, we had this nasty bearish rising wedge that took us to the 7,700 level. And then of course, there's your divergence, bear volume, and then the tumble all the way to the 200 day simple average. And at that point was about 700 NASDAQ points lower toward the 200 day simple moving average. Well, we're not quite there yet, of course, but the market peaked at the moment at 7,900 and has tumbled down toward and now under the 20 day exponential. That is the 7,700 level. Watching out for 7,500. If under 7,500, that's kind of similar to the S&P level, then we see the NASDAQ enter a drop zone towards 7,200. The Russell looks a little bit different because it did not quite achieve prior highs. Its pivot points stood between about 1,600 and 1,550. And we see that volatility crush it lower in today's session. So for the Russell traders, watch 1550 for a drop zone toward 1500. Now let's take a look at the VIX, VIX volatility index and VIX futures over here. This is our index. We like to trade long volatility or get VIX positions or spreads or any type of long premium, either in options or through ETFs when the VIX trades down to prior support levels. It sure does take a while to get these spikes and get these bursts to the upside but it can be a worthwhile strategy to get long premium, long VIX, or otherwise long strategies in volatility when it trades down toward lower levels. For example, about 1150 or 12. We can't predict that exact turning point, but we get long volatility for a month, month and a half, two months, because these things happen. Markets don't go straight up. They also don't go straight down. So this burst in volatility is giving profits to those who got long or traded into a low volatility environment. You can see how the VIX does have a tendency to spike three, four, five days up, down, a few days up, and et cetera. So even in this downtrend, we had a couple of sessions of spike, three, four, five sessions, and then all the way back. So long premium strategies tend to work out, or at least taking into account option premium and the VIX itself. Let's change our perspective now to the broader picture of intermarket money flow. Taking a look at our quad market grid, we see the S&P futures here in the top left, corresponding with it, crude oil. Now crude oil did peak well in advance, a couple of sessions, at least a few sessions, ahead of the equity market peak. And this divergence is something that set in motion this weakness in equity markets. Crude was weak before stocks had peaked, and that's a non-confirmation. Gold continues the downtrend pushing through these trend line levels. Currently, it's about the 1285 level, which is beneath the 1300 pivot. So gold should be seen as bearish unless and until it's above 1300. The big news, of course, we watch these closely with the equity futures is bonds, ZN, ZB, IEF, or TLT, bond funds. There's a closing bell. So now we'll just take a look as we get into the session, there was a rally into the close crude pushed off this 61 per barrel level and again gold will stay at this 1285 level but bonds closed at the high of the day so we'll watch these things closely we can pull back perspectives before we close the video let's take a look at the tlt which is our popular tradable etf in the weekly report we were looking for a bounce or rally up away from 122 that has happened so bonds or tlt the tradable etf is up to the 125 level, but that's just shy of the target. So as bonds go higher, that was the thought process for this week and last week. If bonds supported and bounced and rallied up away from 122, that would probably put the S&P futures or the stock market under pressure. That occurred. So now we let the dust settle as Tuesday is in the bag, but we do have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And of course, plenty more volatility plenty more trading opportunities ahead. But as always, be careful and be safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with your Theo Notley video for May the 7th, 2019.